Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we will be painting the young wolf, the king of the north, Rob Stark. First of all, we're going to be uh, putting on the base colors for the miniature. So first off, I'll be doing the uh, metal. I'll be uh, at applying it to the uh, plates, the chains he has on him. The little uh, various pieces and the smaller details will save for after we um, put uh, most of the colors and the blending on these uh, areas. I'm keeping the consistency pretty thin and the uh, color pretty bright. Brighter than the uh, sworn swords. Now for the uh, different uh, areas, I decided to go with a set of browns, though you could choose uh, greens and blues and all kinds of colors, but I felt for the um, uh, gambeson that's showing through on his thigh, it would be better to maybe do like a nice rich brown color. And uh, same with the boots and the uh, gloves, uh, those I decided It'd be nice to have a variety of of leather tones that are that that seem pretty uh, pretty uh, wealthy compared to the standard fare of the commoners. And uh, the same thing goes for uh, the d various pouches um, on him. Uh, there's this uh, kind of water skin or, or small pack, so I just decided to um, make that a brown tone. The uh, undercoat, I decided that to make that a different brown tone. So um, I pretty much did a, a, a good variety of browns. And you can achieve this by taking just a flat brown color you have, maybe mixing it with uh, other brown tones. Uh, browns can come in all varieties of uh, colors, so feel free to mix in maybe a little green, a little blue, a little red, a little yellow, um, orange even, uh, maybe even purple for certain darker um, areas. And what this achieves is a very different brown color. So instead of just having something that's a little darker, or a little lighter than um, just as the plain brown tone, you can really achieve this nice variety of colors. And it may seem that it's just a set of browns, but it will look a lot more interesting than simply having the same shade that's just altered slightly. When you add in some kind of peach color or something like that, it's gonna feel like a completely different tone and you're gonna be able to catch those subtleties. and. Uh, see how it affects the model. For the fur uh, on the back there, I um, blended in a little bit of uh, lighter color when I, when I kind of made this uh, custom color. So you can see how much different it is compared to the skin and the, um, the, uh, the side kind of uh, cloths the near his thighs. And so you can see I've, I've already achieved a very interesting variety of tones though you may want to go further by just having a completely different color you know green or red or something like that um, maybe trying to keep it with the stark theme but I decided against having the um, stark uh, colors
Uh, you can see here, I'm just going to be putting a simple wash everywhere just to kind of give some um, depth and a sense of um, three dimension. And this will help to um, kind of amplify the effects we'll be doing later. Uh, some people like to paint the face first, so you can completely ignore the order I'm going through. Um, I like to focus on certain areas and kind of bounce around a little bit just to see how the colors and the brightness and darkness interact. But you can absolutely go from uh, different parts of the model and say, you know what, I want to do the face first because that feels the most delicate to me. You might want to save it last in case you make any mistakes. Um, it really depends on your style of painting and what you feel comfortable with. And this is something you should probably find out before you start painting your favorite models. Uh, simply because um, you don't want them to be a source of frustration. You want the uh, linemen that we painted before to be uh, the the template and the, uh, the kind of way to understand how you want to paint your models. And so um, after base coating everything, I'm just going along and washing the areas that seem appropriate. So kind of smaller sections or places with a nice texture, uh, like the, the gambeson um, on the thigh, that, that's a very good place to add a wash um, it, because it is hard to pick out those very subtle raised areas. And also on the um, uh, back of the uh, leg like the heel area and the uh, calf that's that's pretty hard to pick out so it's very easy just to kind of give it a wash so for the fur I, I added that upper highlight as you saw before and that wash is going to kind of bring it together I'm also doing the same with the hair so you're going to have the highlights on the top and maybe certain strands on the sides and darker uh, strands um, also kind of on the sides but fur could have kind of brighter areas, darker areas, spotted textures, so that, that makes it quite different. But the technique of kind of washing it together uh, can be quite similar. So now we're going to do uh, one of the largest parts of the miniature, which is the cloak on the back. So to achieve um, a very uh, smooth blend, uh, this is something you're definitely not going to do on your linemen, but something you definitely want to do with these is you want very thin and subtle coats to start building up. And so um, I'm going to do about three major passes but I'm probably going to go back there seven, eight times. This may seem like a lot, but when you actually achieve the right uh, texture, I mean, uh, sorry, the right consistency of paint, what's going to happen is you're going to see how, how, um, how, uh, how delicate the color shift is. It's just a little bit of yellow and white mixed with that base uh, cape tone. And I'm, I thinned it down quite a bit, not so that it's runny, but so that it glazes. And so with glazing, uh, when you paint it on your thumb or on a piece of paper, the color is very, very thin, um, but it's still, it doesn't run, it doesn't uh, bubble, it doesn't um, kind of form droplets. It just kind of scatters and, and kind of just slightly tints what you're doing is just slightly tinting it so you what you want to do is keep going um, hit the hit the area let it dry and then come back again and over time you'll build up this very very uh, nice and smooth 
uh, transition of colors and it'll be far more effective than throwing a wash on simply because it won't act the right way. A wash on chainmail looks beautiful, but a wash on a cloak can really look um, a poor if it's not done the right way. If it's targeted and carefully uh, managed where it's going, then it can look it can be a very useful tool. But it's better to use uh, this glazing technique to uh, build up these colors and create the effects you want. So this will be the second pass. You can see the color is already building up and it's looking, um, it's starting to look uh, good. If it looks unnatural, then it's it just, it's not right. What you wanna do is create a natural effect. So where there's raised edges and where there might be extra weathering, you'd have that kind of brighter effect. But I would save the weathering for later and just focus on getting those main uh, colors and areas of light. So you can see as it dries, it kind of settles back into the uh, cloak. And you can see this is actually where the, the, the uh, Zenithal highlighting comes in. Because you can see there's darker and lighter areas. Part of that I, I didn't even uh, touch, right? I didn't actually add any darker colors. I simply um, used, uh, when I base coated it, it, it um, already gives you that light and dark from where the primer hit it. Uh, so now I'm not completely done with the light, but I'm starting to uh, add in the dark colors. And so I'm gonna have this slightly darker brown and I'm gonna start glazing that in. And what's gonna happen is I'm not actually blending it together, but I'm kind of overlapping them slightly. And what this is allowing me to do is kind of blend them together uh, through these shuttle Sorry, subtle changes. Uh, one thing um, always to keep in mind is you might see a stark line um, or a transition you're not happy with. But the beauty of glazing is that it's very easy to just subtly change that and um, you'll be able to uh, kind of uh, erase those marks simply by adding in a little bit of uh, effort and, and just adding a little color where it needs to be. Uh, so for the back of the cloak, I am actually washing it down because it is it's not going to get many much light and it's gonna, it's supposed to be kind of out of the viewer's attention, right? It sh if it's if there's primer showing through, that or or the color looks unnatural, then it's going to attract attention. So you want to keep it pretty dark, and kind of um, you know, not very apparent. You know, you want to keep the focus on the the uh, more exciting parts of the model. So uh, as you'll see through this tutorial, I will be uh, constantly adjusting the metallics. And so as I work on other areas, I'll notice um, it should be brighter, it should be a little darker. And so um, it's, it's always a good idea if you notice something to try and catch it or, or make sure you, you will uh, do it later um, just because you might forget to do a major part of, of uh, let's say the pauldron or something and then you might forget to do it but if you if you catch it just always keep it in your mind um, because every part of the model counts if you could have a really beautiful cape but if the fur above it just kind of looks um, unrealistic kind of looks uh, just very much like base coat and wash very kind of childish then the the parts won't really line up so if you want to put in Good amount of effort make sure you do this across the entire model but um as you can see it looks pretty good but if you want to really um get that maximum effect in terms of uh the power of a really well done model 
then you have to, to keep pushing it. It might look good enough, but you need to push the contrast a little further. You need to um, make the, the color richer, or you need to, um, you know, smooth this blend a little more. Don't drive yourself crazy by constantly trying to fix things that aren't, that don't really need fixing or can't be fixed without making it worse. Then you're not fixing it at all. You're basically just creating a bigger problem for yourself. Um, you can see I've brightened the metal. And I'm touching up these raised edges like on the knee and um, especially the chain around his neck. One thing about a chain mail and the chain that moves is their constant rubbing will actually clean each other so any any grime kind of gets rubbed off so uh, those places especially will be bright but you know as a noble he'll he should have very well kept armor so um, it should be it should be quite bright and you can see I'm I'm building up the sources of light I decided not to do straight down but from an angle so the uh, brightness would be from the top right, um, but a little little higher to the sun's uh, zenith, or the, the kind of uh, directly above the model. So um, the light would be cast, it would be hitting the main part of the his left pauldron, and then the uh, just part of the, uh, the uh, right pauldron. And... You can, you'll see later when it comes to lighting the sword, uh, painting the sword, I'll be uh, painting it as if the sun was striking um, along that direction. So kind of 30 degrees from vertical, if imagining that helps. Um, maybe a little bit more or less, but you know, you can um, just pick your light source early on and be consistent with it. Uh, if you're not, then it, it's it's the same problem again of just n not being realistic because you're not being consistent in terms of uh, how much detail you're putting in and, and t for this it's in terms of uh, lighting. So the, the top of the head is going to be um, exposed to the sun so that's why you're going to add that um, kind of uh, these these locks of brighter hair. And if it gets uh, kind of too garish with the bright to dark hair, you can always wash it down. You can always kind of have add the darker hair and, and kind of uh, tone down that, that higher area. Feel free to always uh, adjust things. But um, know that adjustments should be done with these thinner, more... Um, kind of glazing uh, consistencies just so you're not just base coating that that darker hair color on or that darker satchel color but you're actually um, adjusting it but still retaining that 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 lighter color that you want but just kind of blending it in or maybe uh, reducing it slightly it's all about patience and and small adjustments So now I'll be uh, working on the face. I have that uh, base color of Bugman's Glow, and then I'm adding on this uh, kind of barbarian flesh tone, so this darker to this mid-tone. Uh, and I kind of just wanted to um, add that on just to see how it would match up. Sometimes you can just take it a few steps forward, but not fully complete it just to see um, how things line up. If, if um, like the hair is pretty bright, but the uh, armor isn't, then you have to consider, well, why is this the case? And so you might have to adjust things. Um, if you're very happy with the set of armor and the metals you've painted, then um, make sure to adjust uh, the other aspects of the miniature around that so something's not shining bright like it's um, a, a, a bright cloudless summer day and something uh, looks like it's on a rainy day right you wanna 
keep uh, the lighting even, of course. Now, as you can see for the sword, um, I'm adding kind of that darker area on the top left from our perspective. Um, then a brighter on the bottom left. Then a brighter on the top right and a darker on the bottom right. And so it looks like the light is kind of striking across diagonally. And then you blend them together so the mid-tone will kind of uh, end. I think it's called the fuller. I'm not um, a master on sword, uh, you know, sword uh, description. So I, I I think it's called the fuller, The um, that middle point, uh, that, that middle line there. It's going to, around there is where the kind of mid-tone of the sword will uh, lie. And so what I'm doing here is trying to kind of reflect the um, colors and the brightness and the blend, but have the darker um, and light opposite each other. And you can see I'm already creating that effect, but you may have to go back, make the shadows darker, the light brighter, the transition smoother. It's all about... Um, you know, patiently re revisiting it. So now we're returning to the face and we're just going to be adding another, uh, color of that barbarian tone maybe a slightly brighter and so as we did before we're going to be progressively building up the color um, we're going to be adding a flesh wash of course just to kind of um, build up those uh, those uh, kind of that three-dimensionality a little bit you can see it's it's working pretty well right now um, of course, you don't want to drown the eyes and some of the other details with the wash. You just want to um, kind of give it a lit little bit more life. Uh, if you find the uh, skin tone a little too tan or a little too pale, uh, what you can always do is kind of just glaze on the entirety of it. So you'll have the transitions and the variation of tones, but if you add just a simple even layer, you're just going to be shifting uh, the color or the, the brightness, and it'll, it'll work pretty evenly. So... Uh, what I found is that just having that kind of uh, adding like a pale layer or two will actually work pretty quickly to bring that uh, that skin tone to a more kind of northerner look. Uh, very, very pale, uh, quite a quite a lack of sunlight. I was pretty happy at this point, um, but then I realized if I paint um, Jamie the same, which I'll be uh, doing soon, then it'll look a little odd as if they grew up and they, you know, they were neighbors, which of course is not the case. So that's why I decided to add that paler tone. Um, and so just be careful about adjusting it because you don't want to spend, you don't want to ruin all the time you spent working on the face by um, adding a color you don't want. But I, you, ha you have to stick by your decisions if it doesn't come out perfect. But if it's, it's pretty, pretty bad, then feel free to re redo it. Add that a little more color, you know, do what you have to do.
Now for the eyes, they were a little tricky and I, it took a few attempts to get them right. But you wanna take this, this uh, slightly off-white color um, and I mean off-white as in if you have a base white, then it's just slightly shifted over where it's hard to notice a difference. But if you put it by side by side, then you will see it's a little bit off. And you're gonna just uh, kind of dot it in and those kind of eye sockets. Then you're gonna take a very, very tiny amount of black and just bring it on the, uh, the, the, the farthest tip of your brush. This is why you wanna have a pretty fine brush it, it doesn't have to be small, but the tip has to be very sharp. So you don't have to buy something professional, but you should have something with a very sharp tip. And what this will help you achieve is a very, very small and precise iris. So when you're dotting it on, it might be, a, it might be difficult to get the shape right, to line it up properly. So just don't um, do it too violently. Just carefully try and get it right. If you make a mistake, you can just put a little more uh, white on and kind of dull it out or have a secondary brush to just wipe off the area of mistake. And uh, then it, it should work out uh, pretty well. It's only uh, is really irreversible when it comes to the point where you just have an enormous amount of black and, and you just stab it right in the face and you have this big smear across it. That won't occur if you add a very small amount on your brush. And I mean very small, as in um, when you look at the brush's geometry, you're only going for that, mid, that beginning fifth or fourth of the brush. There should be no paint on the rest of it. Now you can see I'm returning to the gloves and I'm just going to be adding a little highlight to it. And that entails just kind of brightening it up and just kind of um, painting across the those knuckles and kind of the, the uh, all the little uh, joints on the fingers. And that'll, that'll work as a pretty effective way of um, adding, adding uh, a nice uh, lighting effect to the gloves. So after um, I, I'm happy with the eyes, I'm just doing a little bit of a cleanup job and a little more highlighting. And that will um, uh, kind of 
get uh, uh, clean up any mess, any little uh, you know over painting that you did, and it should um, it should uh, look pretty clean. So if you have uh, cheap miniatures, you could just get you know a couple of them with um, a pretty pretty good face details. Then just practice getting the eyes, you know, even just doing it a few times can can really help you understand how this process works um, and and getting the skin right. And what you can do, of course, is just strip those models or just paint over them and just do it a few times just to see um, how it feels and maybe the colors you if the colors you're using are right. Uh, I've decided I'm actually going to do mostly Citadel paints for my skin tones because the um, the way their paint works, it's pretty thick out of the bottle. And so when you thin it down to kind of use that to glaze it on skin, it just it just works in a way that I find that I find that it's the most comfortable for me. I've been using Army Painter and... I've decided I would rather go the, the Citadel route when it comes to skin tones at least. Just because the consistency and the way the paint uh, works just, you know, appeals more to me. So, always keep in mind that you shouldn't be set down to a single paint brand or a paint style. Always try and change it up and see if you're happy with it. I might go back and work with um, the Army Painter because it has worked for me in the past, but... You know, it's always good to, to try and find um, new ways of, of um, becoming a better painter. And if a better, if you find a brand to work better for you, then it could make you a much better painter than just saying, I have to stick with Army Painter, I have to stick with Vallejo or, or Citadel. You know, always feel free to change it up and, and work with what you, th you think feels right. Now for the base, um, you you can uh, watch the video where I went through the basing process, but here I'm just uh, working through the similar steps. So um, I put the texture down to kind of blend in with the rock he's standing on. I'll be adding in um, that that um, a cocoa color, that uh, cheap store brand that I got. Then I'll just be kind of stippling on roughly uh, some different uh, tones. When it comes to painting the rock, you could um, make it pretty clean, pretty dirty, depending on what your uh, preference is. I decided to make it more of a kind of a, a rocky gray so it stands out a little more. So uh, for the rock, make sure you mix in other colors besides gray when you're base coating it and when you're adding on more coats. So maybe adding on a little bit of yellow or a little bit of a green or something like that. Um, and that'll just shift it from this kind of a natural looking gray to something that's more realistic. Rocks in reality are not simply um, just this gray uh, tone. It's they have a lot more life to them and a lot more variety than it may seem. Uh, and so it's always helpful to take that into account when you're um, basing and when you're painting these, these details. Then uh, I also added in that the wash that I used and I explain all that in the uh, basing video so make sure to check that out um, when it comes to basing your characters and your trays and your um, other miniatures in general
you can see I'm, I'm revisiting uh, certain areas of the model. I realized it would be nice if I added maybe a little reddish uh, color to the um, to the furs. Um, I, I thought it would be best just only on the kind of the highlight area. So I'm just kind of um, adding that in and then kind of taking out whatever uh, seems a little too strong. Humanity, oh my god. Why? <laughs> Why? Don't balance your things precariously. I have to see how many things broke right now. And it makes me want to cry. Uh, you can see here I've um, kind of toned the face down. I'm sorry I didn't show that, but I just added kind of a pale... Um, pale uh, flesh color and just kind of pushed uh, and kind of just uh, glazed it on the face a few times just to kind of shift the tone to a pale um, more northern color and here I'm just adding this kind of bluish uh, gray I'm just kind of uh, pushing it around the chin there just to add a little stubble Another tip for basing is um, make sure you don't actually, you don't put glue where you don't want. So if you don't want any grass on the rocks, then simply um, uh, stipple or uh, dropper on the um, uh, uh, glue where you want it. And uh, this way you, there's minimal cleanup, uh, getting it off the model or any uh, rock, rocky areas. Uh, so I just added in the um, darker tone and the lighter tone, and then now I'm sprinkling on the major uh, mid-tone. And uh, that, that'll that simply um, kind of add that, that variety of color. For sealing it, you don't want to flood the model because actually the pigments of the different uh, uh, grasses will mix, and the tones will kind of start to become one a little bit and will actually darken down quite a bit so uh, make sure you spray just a nice uh, light layer of PVA and so just as uh, a final touch I'm adding on a, l a little tuft of grass um, just to kind of uh, give uh, the base a little pop and a uh, few more uh, tufts and kind of heavy stuff. And here we have the final model. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, check out my others and stick around, there'll be more coming up. Jamie will be next. Here, just uh, quickly brushing off the grass that is on the model. It's about as simple as that. So, I hope you guys had a great time. I certainly did. I'll see you next time.